John Fudger here with mobilehomeinvesting.net. In this video, I want to walk you through a couple mobile homes uh, to show you what we look for when we're walking through a home looking for repairs as a real estate uh, or mobile home, uh, rather, investor. What's important, what's not important. Before we do that, I'd like to cut to a clip right now to show you kind of that repairs are just only kind of one factor that go into a mobile home deal. In this video, we have a lot to cover and not a lot of time to cover it in. Now, what we're going to be talking about is as a real estate investor, when you're walking up to homes, when you're walking through homes, the first appointment, the second appointment, whenever you're evaluating the home before you've made an offer to a seller, uh, that's what we're going to be talking here today. Uh, what repairs should we be looking at? What issues should we be looking at? What problems in a home are going to make or break the deal? You know, What repairs do you ideally want to get fixed? What repairs maybe you don't want to get fixed before you resell that home? So we're going to be talking a little bit about that. Not one video, even an hour-long video like this one, is going to be able to cover everything with regards uh, to inspiration expecting a mobile home. So if you are an investor and have additional questions, please feel free to reach out and email me. Uh, you can reach me at support at mobilehomeinvesting.net. Now if you're not an investor, if you're just an average you know, civilian walking through the home uh, that you're going to own for yourself, you're going to live there with you and your family, if you don't have any real estate experience or if you or just a regular investor and you don't have any real estate experience, it is always a decent idea to go ahead and hire an inspector. Only a couple hundred dollars and they're going to walk through the home, above the home, they're going to look underneath the home, and they're going to tell you, give you a full report on all the issues that need to be addressed. Uh, and that's actually probably a pretty good idea because that couple hundred dollars it's going to take to get the inspector, you can probably easily find enough repairs that you didn't know about to then justify reducing that cost that you're going to spend on the home. You know, you go to the seller and say, well, Mr. Seller, I'm sorry, you know, I agreed to this price, but we just found out a whole bunch more repairs. I'm going to have to renegotiate to, you know, reflect those types of numbers. And any repairs you do to a mobile home, when you resell it as an investor, be aware that, you know, the repairs that you can do and then you shouldn't do. Ones that you're going to make your money back and then some and ones that you're not going to make your money back because people really don't care. You know, you're selling a used mobile home here. So, if you do fix up a mobile home, any repairs that you fix up, you know, any dollar, any dime that you're putting back into that mobile home, you're going to have to wait to recoup money to then make a profit. So, make sure any repairs that you do, they make the home more attractive so you sell the home quicker. You'll make all your money back on those repairs and then some. Right now, I kind of want to talk to you about um, the different factors that go into a mobile home. We're not going to be talking about the, on this video if each of these mobile homes that we're going to be looking at, and we're going to be looking at a lot of them, if they're a deal or not. Because there are so many factors that go into a deal. You can get a free home and it's definitely, or it might definitely not be a deal. You can get a home that needs no repairs and it might not be a deal. You might have a home that needs repairs, a lot of repairs, and it may be a fantastic opportunity. So when you're looking at a deal, these are just some of the factors that go into it. The time of the year, the park rules, the park application process, what else is for sale by owner nearby, uh, in the park and also nearby, what else is for sale by the park or nearby parks, uh, the area and location of the home that you're buying, the buying demand in the area that you're buying, the exit strategy that you have, are you going to rent this home, are you going to sell it for cash or FHA financing or payments, how much down do you plan to get, how much monthly, uh, your funds, how much do you, funds do you have or how much other people's money do you have on access because let's face it, you are different than most other people. The innate skills you have, the fears you have, the time of the day that you have, the capital that you have to invest in is you know the deal you're looking at, the best first or second or next deal for you or do you want to go to another deal you know five miles away that's a better opportunity for you because you can have an exit strategy of selling that home for cash and making more money that way you can then invest in other homes to, to hold long term or we can also sell notes so you to rate for you to raise money so there's definitely a method to the madness of which home you want to buy at what particular time uh, also repairs which we're going to be talking about on this video well, we're going to be talking about inspecting, not so much how to make the repairs, but inspecting. And then the opportunity cost. You're going to be doing a deal, so that's going to take you away from doing other deals, of course. Uh, in addition to that, I can take this off easily, we have the seller's motivation to consider. Also, your entrance strategy. How are you going to be buying this home? On payments, with cash, with some other form of payment or trade? Uh, is the home vacant? And if it's been vacant, for how long? The longer it's been sitting vacant, the more uh, 
not problems, but the more hoops we, we may have to jump through before we get this home up and running. The time of the month that the, you're buying the home, taxes, liens, does it have to be moved, etc. There's a lot of other factors to consider. Uh, let me grab some markers and I want to show you, we're going to be looking at a couple mobile homes in this video and if you look at, uh, we'll say on this uh, axis is the condition of a mobile home and then this axis is time, hope you can read that. Now realize that typically when you purchase a mobile home brand new, this is when it was just built, you know it's typically going to depreciate. Now this is not to scale uh, but it typically over time, you know, it will depreciate, it will go down in value. The material will start to rot. You know, again, over time, the home will get a little functionally obsolete. Uh, the, the plan will change where, you know, it's a great room and a big open floor plan. And then, you know, as generations go by or decades happen, you know, the floor plans change, styles change, types of carpets change. Um, so over time, the conditions deteriorate typically. But I've seen newer homes, two or three years old, that look in terrible condition. You know, just the condition of the home is very, very poor. And I've seen older homes from the 1960s that look great, that are in really good condition, or better condition than like newer homes sometimes, because they have all new material, or they've just been kept really, really nice. So realize that although there is this sort of spectrum of, you know, repairs where uh, you know, you get a home, it's brand new. Older homes are typically, they need more repairs. That is not the case all the time. So whenever you go into a mobile home, uh, realize to just have fresh eyes when you're looking at this home. This home is like no other home that you've been through, and there will be anomalies. You'll have nice homes that are older and newer homes that are not nice at all. And we just need to show, I mean, you need to obviously be aware of that because that shows a lot about the seller who they are, how they upkeep their home, their pride of ownership, what they're thinking, their mindset a little bit, uh, all goes into the kind of home that they have, their ability to resell it, how many people are gonna be interested in it at the current condition. So I hope that this all makes sense. You understand that there's kind of a, a spectrum of repairs. Every mobile home is going to probably have some degree of cosmetic or structural repairs needed. Are those, need, are those repairs needed before you resell the home? Maybe, maybe not. And that's very, very important to know. So I hope that that made sense. We have a lot to cover in this video. We're gonna be talking about the inside inspection uh, that you should be looking at when you're walking through a mobile home inside. And then we're gonna talk about the uh, exterior uh, inspection that you wanna consider when you're walking around the outside of a mobile home. Then we're gonna wrap up and then we're gonna talk about a couple other things. Uh, so let's cut right now back uh, to the video. All right, so on the spectrum of repair uh, repairs for a mobile home, this one needs a lot of cosmetic work, but as far as structural work goes, really doesn't need a lot. Now, you can see the kind of low pride of ownership uh, that the sellers have left this home in for us to walk through. You want to go ahead and look anywhere that there's water, windows, the kitchen, obviously, sink, uh, all the perimeter of the homes where the gutters are, you know, and water can, can come in. Water is an enemy for a mobile home. And we want to look for the big five. Let's actually start here in one of the bedrooms. This is a two-bedroom, two-bath from the 90s. And um, uh, what was I going to say? We want to look for the big five. We want to look for the, uh, the floor. We want to be cognizant of the floor and the uh, roof and the walls and the electric and the plumbing. Now with electric, I'll also lump in there uh, the appliances as well, hot water heater and all the appliances. So let's actually take that kind of one by one. Let's first talk about the floor. No matter what the mobile home looks like, you want to be aware where are their floor repairs and where are their not floor repairs. With a carpet, it's hard to tell because we don't have x-ray vision. So you have to walk along every side. That's me jumping up and down. Walk along uh, the whole perimeter of the mobile home, kind of every square inch. You know, really be aware of that. If there's a bed or there's carpet lying down, or carpet somewhere, or you know, an area rug that you're not sure of, or you want to get under that bed to test the floor, do that. You have to know what you're buying in a mobile home. So let's uh, again, the floor in this bedroom, you know, aesthetically it looks decent. We can save the carpet for sure. The walls need a painting, of course. Underneath the windows, you want to be aware oh, of just pushing because again, you should push as hard as you can, and these walls should not wiggle. If they do wiggle, that's an issue. Now, besides cigarette butts that you see here, I don't see any evidence of termites, uh, which would be little, uh, basically. I think termite poop. It's hard to uh, uh, 
All right, I'd like to interrupt this video really quick to show you uh, just this Google image. Uh, if you go to Google and you type in termite windowsill, you're going to see pictures of what you're going to look for with regards to termite evidence in your mobile home. Now, these are uh, single family homes as well as reg you know regular mobile homes, but the termites are going to be relatively the same. So I was curious and looked at how termites live, what their life cycle looks like. And uh, if you didn't know, they have eggs, they go to the larva, the nymph, the worker cycle, uh, and then they alate, which which means that they grow wings and now these monsters are airborne <laughs> attacking your home uh, and then they dealate which I bring that up because when they dealate they lose their wings and they leave them all over the home but typically where you'll see them is on the wi the window sills or on your countertops you'll see wings and you'll say well what are these well it's termite evidence or it's term it's the alated wings of the termites now here you can see a lot of alated wings and frass Frass are wood pellets that are excreted by the termites after they're done eating the wood. All these tiny wood pellets are called frass, F-R-A-S-S, -S, and that's just a load of frass and termite wings, uh, and here are more termite wings. So that's what you want to look for when you are looking at a mobile home. Just be aware of the windowsills and if you see any wings or frass laying around from termites. Any issue that you do see, you're probably not an expert. So any expert you do see, or any issues you do see, write it down. You can come back with a professional, with a handyman, with an inspector, and then ask more questions. Or if you see a problem in the ceiling and it's soft or there's wetness here and you can feel wetness, you might want to explore that before you buy it. You might want to go ahead and take a small piece of the ceiling down. Again, before you buy it, or you have to assume it's going to take a, you know, a bunch of work, maybe $500, you know, give or take. And you, you know, if you can't get in there, you want to go ahead and be conservative and make sure you've budgeted for those repairs. We're going to talk about budgeting here a little bit later in this video, but let's go back to floors. As far as floors go, this one looks pretty good. And we'll talk about floors in a little bit. Uh, additionally, with floors in the tubs, you want to jump around and make sure. Oh, that's nice artwork. I feel like I'm discovering an old ancient cave somewhere. Okay, again, besides the paint, uh, the shower looks good. Now, the water is on, so there's no leaks. I have verified that, but the electric is not, so we can't check the appliances or hot water heater uh, if those work. Again, you want to bring a flashlight, which I don't have today, to look into all the closet corners. It's pretty bright right now, but if you come at night, uh, you definitely want to bring a flashlight. And ask sellers what's up if you see repairs needed. Again, we want to push down there. All right, that's all solid. Uh, you want to ask sellers what's going on? What's going on with this leak? What's going on with the soft spot? Has it been fixed? Has it not been fixed? Again, this big walk-in closet. I mean, this is a nice looking home. It's a shame that they left it like this because it would probably sell a heck of a lot quicker. They actually put a little bit of time and effort uh, into getting this thing back. So it does have gas. The gas is off. Uh, again, we want to be aware. If you can see underneath there, there's going to be a new piece of plywood needed. Still not a big deal. Let's kind of run this, see if we see any leaks. And you cannot probably see anything right now, but uh, there's no, there's no leaks. All right, it looks good for right now. Okay, again, these TVs, I wonder if these TVs work. All right, let's go into the second bedroom here. We'll check the outside in a little bit. Again, you want to walk through every soft spot or every spot on the floor to see if some soft spots have, uh, happened. Now be aware that again along the perimeter of a mobile home that's where the gutters can kind of overflow and water can come in just dripping down uh, and then when you get to the baseboards behind the wall again we don't have x-ray vision but you want to just push as hard as you can. Now this is paneling uh, not drywall but either way it should not shake. There shouldn't be any uh, problem there with, with shakeage and I can show you what that looks like here. So here's a wall with just a little bit of give to it. I don't know how much you can see that uh, this is actually okay. You want to be aware of a wall that, um, that there's a lot of give. But I'm pushing as hard as I can and this is just kind of barely budging. Alright, now let's go back to this two bedroom, two bath. And you can see that they broke a window here. There's the glass on the bottom of the floor. And they just put a board, a piece of old crappy board. And if this window is broken, then that means that water has been getting in on the windowsill right there and probably rotting a little bit of that out. So again, water, it just gets everywhere. I mean, if there's holes, uh, and that water is definitely the enemy uh, of a mobile home. So again, this room, besides being messy and the doors needing to be put back on the closet, looks really, really good. It looks like a gnome. 
Isn't that? That's weird. Okay, so again, we want to walk through the floor. We checked out the floor. Walls, we're pushing over all of the walls. Uh, we want to make sure that we know just what we're getting, where the soft spots are in the walls, in the floors. We want to look on the ceiling, too. Now, this is just a hole in the ceiling, but if there's any water spots, that's the main issue with regards to ceilings. Uh, again, look at this room. This is for a different mobile home, but you can just see that there are problems in the ceiling throughout uh, this room and really throughout this entire property. Now, we're not going to look through this entire mobile home, but let's go into this other bedroom right here and take a look again at the ceiling uh, concerns. Again, now these might be old. They don't feel, that doesn't feel too wet. And then this, again, we're not exactly sure what is there. You'd want to, you'd want to go ahead and assume that the ceiling needs to be um, retarded above or resealed. So that's step one. So you want to fix the leak that's there. And then you want to go ahead and remove and replace any insulation. This is a good example. See, that's the roof right here. And then you have insulation, see support beams, and then you have the ceiling. So again, not many issues. Any ceiling, you know, problem is going to be kind of right above uh, uh, those, those um, water stains. So I wanted to show you all that. Now let's go to the next property. All right, so here's a mobile home that is older. This one's from the 70s and they have that weird kind of boat arc looking shape to them. But this is a mobile home that we already purchased. I want to go ahead and walk through it uh, real quick to show you a, in an older mobile home on kind of what these look like. Also, all right, so you can see that the floor uh, is gone in here and or the floor covering rather we still want to do all the same stuff we want to be aware of what we're buying what does the roof look like what do the floors look like what do the walls feel like do the appliances work is the electrical up and functional how about the uh, plumbing does that work so we want to know what we're buying and we since really haven't talked about the ac systems the stove the fridges those are things that you have to test even i would say outlets you know if you want to go ahead and turn on things that you know are you know plugged into an outlet if there was a lamp here i would turn it on to see if that outlet worked uh, you can see that there are some soft spots in the floor now this is being fixed and i'm glad this is kind of mid uh, construction we're going to go to a different room where there's more floor work needed and you're going to see what that looks like so again you want to step everywhere to see what is soft and what is not soft and that's going to tell you uh, what needs to be replaced or not now really simple if there's any soft spots in the floor let's pretend that there was a soft spot right here like a one foot by one foot square what we would want to do is go ahead good boy and is cut back to the to the joists so there's a joist right there it's going to run all this way there's one probably right here going connecting those and then there uh, is another joist you can see right there actually there's the joist but then there's a piece of plywood just so that this can be tacked on the new floor can be tacked onto this piece of good wood and this joist is good but um, you want to just cut back to the joists so again if there was a soft spot right here we would cut here and all this area out you know lift up the rug and then you just put that back down you'd want to nail it possibly screw it uh, down for sure so the screws don't come out and then you can go ahead and even foam this if you want to they sell just foam that you can put right here just so that there's no breeze coming through and then the carpet back and you have yourself a nice functioning floor so a lot of people think that soft spots are a big deal they're really not uh, that big of a deal so the bathroom looks good this one comes with the washer and dryer Ooh. Some soft softness right here, probably from the washer leaking uh, over the course of the years. See some stains right there. It's hard to tell. I need to again. That's why you need a flashlight when you're walking through these. There's a soft spot right here. It's springy almost. And you can be a, a, a judge. You know, when you're walking through it, do you weigh a hundred pounds? Is it is it breaking underneath you? Or are you a bigger person and it's bouncing? You know, underneath you. Again, soft spot right there that has to be fixed. Surprise you know, underneath a window. Let's go ahead and push that as well. Now these walls in here, I've already pushed on all the walls. These, this is a, for being such an old home, this one is huge. It's got high ceilings, very large. Even has this cool A-track. Sweet, that comes standard. And whatever that is, 
I don't know what that thing is. So you want to, again, look through a home and uh, make sure, you know, what are the chronic problems? Again, one or two spot, soft spots in a floor. It's kind of common. Again, right, right by the front door. That's been removed and replaced years ago. And again, are there, um, is this like a chronic issue throughout the home? Or is this just like one or two spots throughout the home? Some fruity pebbles in the tub. But besides that, uh, everything looks really good. All right, and those, that sink is not working. I wouldn't have known that if I didn't try. I'm not sure if it's just something wrong with the uh, pipes or just this. Again, it's me stepping under there. This looks really good. Again, it looks like the dog might have gotten there. Be aware and make sure to take pictures of everything. Again, ask the seller. You don't have to talk down about the home. Probably people come through and kind of do that anyway. Oh, this is terrible. You want to actually talk good about it. You want to let the seller know, hey, I'm very interested. You know, uh, obviously the home does need work, uh, but, you know, besides the price and the terms, let's kind of come to an agreement uh, on those and figure out if we can do something, you know, because I can take on the cosmetic work. Again, this particular home looks really, really good. We're going to go through one that does not look as good. Uh, you want to be able to check the appliances. And then also, this is a 100, yeah, 100 amp main service coming in. Kind of tough to see that, uh, but that's very good. We want at least 100 amps coming into a home. If not, we might have to upgrade it. Uh, so now let's go ahead and look on the outside. All right, I hope this far everything makes sense. So we've talked about the inside repairs, or not repairs, we've talked about the inspections, kind of walking through a mobile home as an investor. What are you looking for? And on the inside of a mobile home, we're gonna talk about the big five again in just a second, but you wanna be aware of issues uh, that are kind of common sense, but you might not even think of them. Like when you walk into a home, is the ceiling really short? You know, are you bumping your head? Is one of the rooms really tiny? Uh, do you have to walk through a bedroom to get to the only bathroom in the home? Does it smell really weird? Is the home narrow? These are all issues that, you know, your buyers, your people who you sell to, uh, people who you want to rent to, are going to notice. So be aware of things like that. Now, in addition to the big five, which are, of course, the roof, which is the roof and the ceiling, you know, what problems are there? Is it sagging? Is it dipping? Is there water coming through? Is this a chronic problem throughout the home or just, you know, a, a spot issues? Um, what's going on with the roof, the walls, has water come down into the walls and damaged the walls, are there fist holes in the walls, or from a dog maybe, what's going on there. Um, and be aware of things leaning up against the walls or pictures. Move pictures, move things leaning up against the walls and look. Just like on the floor, look under beds, pull up area rugs because sellers will oftentimes hide problems. You know, they'll move a bed, they'll move a couch to, to cover up a big soft spot or a big hole in the floor. So be aware of the big five. Those are the roof, the walls, the flooring. Walk around every square inch of the flooring. Also the plumbing. Be aware of the plumbing and the water. Where's water coming into this home? You know, from the pipes, from the windows, from the roof. Is water coming in? Should it be coming in? You know, is it working? Is the plumbing working fine? Uh, is the plumbing shut off at the moment? Also the gas, that's also kind of a plumber's job as well. Um, occasionally or a lot of the times they can look at the gas. Um, and it, does the gas working? Is, has there been a pressure test recently? Will you, you know, was somebody using the gas recently? Can you test the furnace or the appliances to make sure that the gas is working? Also the um, electric. Now with plumbing and with electric, if that's not on, that's something you wanna have considered to be turned on. Remember, those are two of the big five, plumbing and electric. And when I group in electric, I mean appliances as well. Do the appliances work? Um, does the hot water heater work? Does the um, HVAC system work? The essential heat and air or the AC units, the swamp cooler on the top of the home, if there's a swamp cooler. You know, do, do the appliances work? Make sure that you're buying this property. You know, don't let people uh, you know, control you. Don't let the sellers tell you what the deal is. You're the one buying the home. It's your money that the sellers are after. They want to trade their home for your money. So your money is valuable here. And if you want the electric or water or gas turned on, you might have to pay for it uh, or, or pay the sellers um, back depending on their money issues. Do they have the money to do it? Do they not? Is the home vacant? You know, can you, what, what can you test and what can't you test? So make sure you do stay in control. Make sure you're able to test the big five roof, walls, floor, plumbing, and electric. Also be aware of you know, issues with the home like we talked about before. Uh, very, very important stuff to know. Realize that, again, if there are chronic problems throughout the home versus just, you know, one or two spots, you know, issues here and there. And be aware of your budget. I mean, how much is this gonna cost to, re to have redone? If you don't know this, 
walk through with the handyman feel free to send me over pictures I'll give you my thoughts but basically we're just breaking down things to you know how long should it take to repair what is the material cost and then how long should it take to repair you know because that is depending on you know it's gonna take three hours to fix this you know big soft spot in the floor well you need to know how much material that's gonna cost that comes from experience and also how much time that's gonna cost oh it's gonna take three hours and that comes from experience as well now are you gonna pay a handyman fifty dollars an hour to do the repairs or ten or fifteen dollars to do the repairs so keep in mind that repairs can fluctuate and you need to have a budget you can spend way more on repairs than you should simply by going with the wrong handyman, the wrong contractor. I do another video talking about uh, contractor tips, handyman tips, when looking for a mobile home uh, repair, rehab type of person. You can check out um, right here. But I hope that this all made sense. Um, again, there's a lot of pieces to this. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Right now, let's kind of change gears and let's talk about the outside of a mobile home. But typically, you know, we get to a home, we go into a home, we talk with the sellers, we walk around a little bit, we build some rapport. Um, again, we were on the phone, now we're, t now we're in person, face to face, you know, looking at this home. And then after you're done talking and having some lemonade or, you know, a drink with the seller and chit chatting and looking at the home, then you want to go ahead and get out of the home, walk around the outside, look at the roof, look underneath the home. So that's what we're going to do right now. So let's actually cut away from right here and go back to the original video uh, and we'll continue you walking through uh, the outside of this home and then a few others. So the outside doesn't look too much better. This is how the uh, sellers are currently showing their property. Now you want to bring dog treats because, hey buddy! Now this doggy is very friendly, but whenever you're in your car uh, or going to look at a property, make sure to have some big dog treats, some big dog biscuits. Because if you do go to a property and you see a dog or their neighbor's dog or there's a random dog, this one is just chained up here. Um, you want to go ahead and just be uh, not too scared and you want to kind of have something for that dog. So anyway, enough about dogs. Let's go ahead and talk about the exterior of a mobile home. We want to look for pinholes. We want to look for holes of any sort. We want to look for the kind of stand on the side here. You want to look for the mobile home waving at all, you know, just kind of waving from just uh, settling or the home being older or this popping out for some reason, the, the siding uh, or being loose. And then again, you're not going to know because you can't go into, you know, you can't look through the wall, but what's going on there? Is it completely rotted? Does it just have to be tacked back? You know, what's going on with the skirting? So this looks good. It's got a nice huge deck. Um, there are some holes in the skirting, which is very common. We don't take off anything for that. Uh, this is where the hot water heater is, I'm imagining. All right, that looks, that looks fairly decent. Everything's in there. I'll push on that. That's pretty firm, okay. All right, now I like how this is fenced, uh, for sure. And there is a fence here. I think this is one of the only ones in the park. If you want to look at sturdy, you do want to be aware of the roof. Is it a shingle roof, a tin roof? Tar roof, flat roof. So if you can get up there, great. Um, if there's evidence again of water damage, it's good to go when it rains because then you can see okay what is wet and what's not wet uh, for sure. And then again, we want to do the same due diligence Ooh. with the outside of the home. Uh, you do want to look underneath the home and let's see if there's a spot where it's not skirted. You want to go ahead and take the time. To look underneath the home. So let's go ahead and look for kind of a. This is spot is just discolored, but for some reason it's making me want to. Okay, all we're going to do is lift up uh, this front piece here, and then there's the bottom track where the skirting goes into. We're just going to take this piece of skirting, and it just slides right into the next one right here, and that slides into that one right there. So, without putting the camera down. Oh, so you're not doing a very good job helping me here. Okay, and of course the dogs help with an inspection. And you want to go ahead and look at what you're buying. What's hanging down, what's not. You can see pipes. Uh, you may or may not be able to see pipes, but are they going into the ground? Or is the water literally from the toilet and everywhere else just falling onto the, the ground? 
and that does happen. Now you can see down there, might be tough to see, but that's where the insulation is falling. So if that was what you were seeing and the inside of the home looked good, you know, you want to say, well, what's going on over there? Let me kind of take some skirting off over that side and inspect. So again, this is a nice clean looking underneath the mobile home. I've seen it look really nasty. People just throw their junk under there, years and years of junk piling up. Just, you know, tools and, not tools, just material and just junk. All right, I really hope so far that made sense. Now, we looked through the exterior now of a couple mobile homes, and we really want to be aware of, you know, kind of common sense issue. Where's water coming in on this home? The spots that we saw on the interior of the home, let's look for holes and issues and problems where the water could be coming in. So if you saw some interior leaks, you know, get on the roof and check out what's going on. If you don't have a ladder, do the best you can with, you know, looking visually at the roof. Bring up high power flashlights so you can look underneath the home. Look for pipes just falling down onto the, you know, the, the main ground where the pipes aren't even going into the ground. You want to look under the home to see what's falling down, you know, the insulation. You want to be aware of holes around the outside of the mobile home. Where could water be getting in? Also, just what looks nice. You know, does it look nice? Is it going to have to be painted? What does the park manager say? If this is a mobile home in a park what does the manager say do they want the home pressure wash or clean do they want new curb appeal uh, shed added a deck a carport you know what do the what does the park want to see if this is in a park if it's in a park or on private land be aware of the land as well you're purchasing you know whether it's in a park or on land that person who's going to be living in the home is going to use the land is there only like five feet of land between each home or is there 10 or 20 or 30 feet or is this two acres of land that you're buying which is going to make this attractive very much to the next person buying it or renting it or living in it so be aware of the outside there's not as much technical stuff going on on the outside but do be aware of what the home looks like because that is the first thing that a person's going to see when they drive up um, again any personal questions or thoughts, you know, hey, should I do this? Is it going to be worth it? Am I going to get my money back? You know, painting the outside, residing the home, putting new skirting on. Again, if you're going to be living there, it's a lot different. But if you're going to be selling this home as an investment property, depending on how you're selling it, conventional financing, all cash, bank financing with payments, are you renting it? all changes what you want to do to this home because remember every dime that you spend on the home you're gonna to have to recoup that money to then make start making a profit and really understand what your buyers are looking for do your buyers want granite countertops or brand new siding or they rather get into the home with a little bit less money uh, out of pocket than they need to so you know otherwise and can they do the repair work themselves you know is it cosmetic is it structural be aware of all these issues like right now I'd like to actually cut to a couple walkthrough videos of some investors around the country looking at mobile homes uh, kind of their first impression you know after we talk to somebody on the phone to then set an appointment we're gonna go to that appointment and then these are the videos that you're gonna see so you'll hear the you know the investor and the seller kind of interacting this is lot 146 at Older unit. I'll have to find out what year it is. Uh, there's a shot of the roof. Walk around the outside. And then we'll hop inside. Skirting for the most part looks okay. A couple little spots. It's got um, metal siding. A vent that needs to be fixed. The windows are okay looks like Let's see where the AC is on this one some skirting there needs to be repaired I don't see an AC unit on the outside here let's see if we can figure out by reps. Uh, where it is in here. Um, hmm. All right. Well, I'll we'll figure that out a little later. Let's go on inside and take a look. It's got a little awning here, and the door hits hits the awning. That has to be fixed. Um, didn't see a soft spot by the door. Oh, I just got a head full of spider webs. Okay, so this is the family room. Let's see how the roof looks. I mean, the ceiling looks. 
Um, is that water damage? Let's see. Okay, so back on that side, which we'll go to in a second, is I believe the uh, master bedroom and the bathroom. It's a decent size uh, bathroom. Bigger than I was expecting anyway, this home. This is the smaller of the two bedrooms, but um, it does have a closet built in. The ceiling actually doesn't look too bad in here. Some wood paneling, I can paint that. It would look a million times better. Um, that's a lot of junk left in here. It does have a little bit of a musty odor, but this one's been sitting here for a while. I think she said a little over a year. Here is the kitchen. That's really the only row of cabinets. If I painted those, they would look so much better. And kind of the dining area with the fridge. Again, don't see any major roof damage. That looks like it was older than touched up or something. Um, Alright, so this would be laundry. No. Actually, I believe that's where the fridge was supposed to go and she had it over here. So, anyway, I have to do something with that. Uh, it looks like they must have had some soft spots and probably just put that plywood down there rather than fixing it the right way. Um, here's the laundry area. Okay. Yeah, definitely an old, old, old furnace or AC system. Um, Alright. Here is the bathroom. Don't see any spots in the ceiling. What kind of pipes do we have in here? This is so old, I doubt it would be poly pipes. Well, I do see one poly pipe. I know you can't see it, but on that right hand side, that's poly. Um, but the other one's PVC. Um, this is what I meant by the bathroom. It's got a big garden tub, which I wasn't expecting in one this old. Okay, and this is that smaller bedroom I was talking about, and a little bird, poor little guy. Um, Alright, I'm going to take a look at the electrical. Okay, it does have breakers rather than those old round fuses. Um, here's kind of the one spot I saw that needs some work. Uh, this is the, the only spot of mold that I saw. Looks like it was due to that water heater. You know, I can get a water heater for... 250, 300 bucks. I have some extra expansion tanks. I could have it installed um, for another probably 200 bucks. So about 450 or so to get that fixed, and then whatever it costs to replace the wood there. Um, yeah, it's really the only spot in the home I saw with mold. So um, ceiling in here looks pretty good too. What is this? Whatever that is, it looks old. They painted over the ceiling at some point. I see. Cause they have a lamp in here. Got it. Uh, any le uh, roof that leaks? Has been there. It's just old. Yeah, I'm not sure. Okay. There might have been a. Do you uh, know of any actual roof leaks that? Nothing uh, leaks in the. And she's unhooked in the hallway. I see. But the wires are there. They're just they got connected. Once again, she knocked out the water to the. I think a pipe got thrown outside and misplaced. Okay. What are this and the, the light, light here? Works. The outlet here works, but not the light. Got it. All right. So the outlet works. The light does not work. The plumbing to this sink, sink does not work. Toilet does. Toilet does work. Yeah. Got it. Uh, shower. Shower. I'm get getting. It. I get a dribble. Interesting. You can hear it floor. Yeah. Well, it, it works, but it's very low pressure. Yeah, I got it. And then this is, is that where the, the roof leak is? Or it was? That must have been, yeah. Okay. I have seen no active water coming in through the roof. Got it. And then this is something else she did in the damn track, track Hey, board. come on in right the damn tracking vent. Okay. She, she took down, she put up tracking <coughs> to replace the roof in here. In here. She did all that? Then my mother will do it. Okay. Mm -hmm.
Bunny. Is that what that is? I was like, I, I was like, it's not not cat exactly. It's yeah, rabbit. Okay. Rabbit. That makes sense. It was hopefully going away to the <laughs> and here's kind of what the community looks like I noticed this one the lots are a little larger the spacing between the properties I don't know if you can see all that but there's a good bit of space between each home so um, let's walk around this one definitely has been neglected for a while um, it looks like the siding is metal for sure it needs some skirting too uh, we'll take a peek in there see if we can see anything okay let's finish walking around the outside here get a good view of the roof it looks like a few of the windows have been replaced that's a double pane unit there but then you've got the one like that it looks like plexiglass and then this is probably original okay let's uh let's step inside all right so no soft spot by the front door but ceiling has a couple spots on it um, this I guess is a bedroom too this is not the master and I believe this one was 12 feet wide I was counting the floor tiles assuming they're 12 inches each so here is the kitchen a little more of a close up uh, let's see what kind of piping it has in there it's polybutylene yeah it is polybutylene Okay. Alright, laundry. Is there a soft spot here? Let's see. No, yeah, it seems okay. Right there anyway. But right here, boom! There's a hole in the floor, sir. Um a couple more little spots on the ceiling. This one isn't terrible for how old it is. I'm not sure what year it is. I'll uh, see if I can find out. And this, I guess, would be the master. And it's about, assuming that these are 12 inch tiles, and each, each one of these is 12 inches, um, it's eight and a half wide, and then 12, uh, 11 and a half coming this way. About 12 feet going that way. So, let's look at the ceiling again. Got a spot there. I just stepped on a soft spot. So there's a soft spot in here. Yeah, I don't know if you can hear that. <laughs> okay. Um, it was a leaf, part of what I was stepping on. But yeah, we've definitely got some issues in the ceiling here. That is not, it looks like at first it would be mold, but it actually appears more to be. Um, like shoes and stuff being kicking them off. Uh, all right, that's it for this lot. Thank you so much for sticking around to the very end of this video. I really hope it was helpful. Uh, you got clarity from it. You gained value. You got kind of a behind-the-scenes look into you know our brains as mobile home investors and what we're looking at again if you are not a mobile home investor an inspector is definitely out there for you an inspection service could be about three to four hundred dollars uh, depending on the size of the mobile home and if they go underneath the mobile home as well but if you are an investor and you have any questions please don't hesitate to reach out support at mobile home investing Dot net. Uh, if you are already investing in mobile homes, maybe you can add some of these uh, techniques into your own uh, inspection uh, inspections of, of mobile homes. And then obviously, if you're newer, uh, these are things that you want to be on the lookout when you're looking for mobile homes. Remember, repairs are just one piece of the puzzle. They're you know a good piece of the puzzle, but we just have to budget for those repairs and account for them and know with clarity exactly what we're buying. Not just the home, but the situation, the area, the location, the demand of the market 
market, you know, the time of the year, etc. So I really hope that that made sense again. Um, thank you so much. Please like and share this video if it was helpful. And uh, if you have any ideas for future videos, please don't ever hesitate to comment them below. Again, you can comment below or reach out to me uh, and I will talk to you soon. Thank you so much. Goodbye.